you so much. Thank you for coming to my little show. Listen, can I just say, I call it my little show because at the time of this recording, we haven't settled on a name yet. Um, there has been quite a few disagreements because the BBC obviously want to call it something snappy that will guarantee millions of viewers tuning in. So I suggested we called it the Ricky Gervais sketch show. <laughs> but the BBC thought it was a slight tad dishonest. So onwards and upwards, I'm hoping that they will opt for my second choice, uh, an audience with Little Britain. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first of, of three shows we're doing, uh, three specials. Uh, I was going to do six, but at the last minute, Jonathan Ross needed a new tie. <laughs> Um, there are lots of sketches, uh, and I'll be doing some impressions of famous people and celebrities uh, that hopefully you'll recognise. But it's not just impressions. We're also doing loads of brand new characters. So the ones you don't recognise, don't think they're rubbish impressions. <laughs> because they're actually the new characters. They're not impressions at all. Unless, of course, they're like deliberately new characters doing rubbish impressions, which could happen. But then you'll know about that. Because when it does, the impressions won't be that good. <laughs> They'll be rubbish, but only because they're characters who are rubbish at doing impressions, you see. So they don't count as actual impressions. Unless, of course, they are impressions that are rubbish. <laughs> Which I hope they won't be. Oh, God, I hope they won't be. Good. So I'm glad I've managed to explain that, because it's been confusing me all week. <laughs> yourself sir yes and you say these are cooking herbs yes it's an ingredient for cooking my wife gave me them don't make me laugh sir <laughs> it's a herb no i believe that it's the having a wife bit that's unbelievable <laughs> oh my god nicole kidman having a party. <laughs> this week on Chief Biogs, we turn the spotlight on Demi Moore. I always wanted to be an actress, but I became a movie star instead. Demi was born in God's own country, the US of A, the daughter of a man and a woman. Rumor has it she spent a whole nine months in her mother's womb. Demi was christened Demi, which is French for Demi. And bouncing happy baby girl, Demi had big dreams and ambitions. Demi means a quarter. Like semi means a half. And more derives from more, which means she is a quarter more than anyone else. I mean spiritually, not in a fat way. Demi's career went from strength to strength. In 1992, she starred alongside Tom Cruise in John Grusom's classic, A Few Firm Men. Demi knows how to look after herself. Her body is a temple. She knows she has to look great, and she knows what's good for her. And she doesn't put anything in her mouth that doesn't advance her career. In 1987, Demi married Hollywood hunk Bruce Willis, but after 11 happy years, they split. There has been so much speculation about why Bruce Willis and I split up. Vicious and malevolent rumors that have hurt me and my children. But the simple truth is that I left him because he went bald. 
In 2003, Demi teamed up with the likes of Cameron and Diaz in the second Charlie's Angels film. Her sensational look in the movie led to speculation that she'd undergone major plastic surgery. Demi was keen to set the record straight. Beauty is on the inside. I never play around with myself. Any effect I achieve is through diet, exercise, dedication, and that alone. Hi, I'm a dolphin handler. I'm gay. I work in Ocean World, Florida. Come on down. We have octopi. I don't know Demi, but I think she's beautiful. And we'd love her to come and play with our bottle noses, Alice and Drew. In 2005, Demi married Hollywood heartthrob Ashton Kutcher, 15 years her junior. Despite being a busy mom with a heavy work schedule, she still manages to keep her youthful looks. I'm an actress, so obviously I'm going to rush playing the parts I'm offered now that I'm older. Where do you think you're going, John? Just leave me alone and butt out of my life. I'm your mother, John. You can't just leave like this. I deserve some respect. I deserve some respect. <laughs> Miss Smaller? Hmm? How old did you say you were again, Miss? I didn't say, Mark, and I'm not planning to. Oh, come on, Miss. Go on. Go on. Oh, I'm sorry. That is classified information, I'm afraid. Now, back to the settlement of Augustus, thank you. I reckon you're 30, miss. Well, that's very flattering. Thank you very much, Gernon. No, more like 37, I reckon. Well, who knows? Now, please, if we can turn our attention... 40. Back. No, I'm not 40! <laughs> Or am I? <laughs> Ladies to Ladettes, etiquette for the modern woman in six easy lessons. <laughs> Lesson number one, couture. When it comes to the Ladettes wardrobe, the first consideration is to lose all shame. Show off that midriff. And don't be embarrassed about drawing attention to the misshapen tattoo of a butterfly on your buttock. <laughs> That's it, Emily. Lots of cleavage and plenty of upper thigh. Leave nothing to the imagination. With simply the choice use of a few garments and some lewd behavior, you'll be taken from behind before the clock strikes 12. <laughs> and the clock will crow more than thrice, I can assure you. But do remember, girls, this is for winter wear only. In summer, you can lose the top entirely and strut around in just your bra. Remember, girls, LTD, lose that dignity. Good afternoon. Jobs they shouldn't have done. Number 43. I'm in a lot of pain, Dr. Goody. <laughs> you want to go and get blood to find that pretty thing? <laughs> so where's it at? <laughs> in my knee. You've lost me. Where is that exactly? <laughs> in my leg. Be more spe spe specific. My right leg. <coughs> nah, none the wiser. Just down here. Anyone near your teeth? Because I'm next, but on those. <laughs> nice. Good evening. <laughs> Is this Roger's house? Within these four walls has dwelt body and soul for five years and more, the man of whom you speak. <laughs> oh, Mike, Linda, excuse me, darling. Yes, you uh, haven't met my wife, have you? This is Petrova Velchevnuskus Lambroskela Wilson. Just call me Pet. Just call her Pet. Ah, oh, Mike, too kind. Come in. Come through. Come through. 
We've uh, just done the place up, actually. Mike, Linda, the time is nigh. Feast yourselves, gorge yourselves on Pringles and other sundry snacks. Thanks very much. Can't resist these. <laughs> It is my understanding that you have recently delivered unto this world an innocent child. That's right, Darren. Darren. Yes, after his uncle. <laughs> and tell me, do you gather him to your milk-white breast and give him suck? <laughs> He's been on solids for three weeks now. He loves pureed apple and rice. <laughs> Does he sleep at night, or is there wailing and howling beneath the mantle of the moon? No, he's quite a good baby, really. Oh, Jack used to cry all night, didn't he? Until I silenced him with the formula. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. So, red or white, or there's fizzy water. So have you been on holiday this year? A tale must be told. My husband was burning. Burning! Burning! Her ladyship forgot to pack the ombre solaire. <laughs> <laughs> Here, love, tell them what happened on the first night. Before my very eyes, a sight that is forever engraved upon my memory, I saw him rise from his bed as if drawn by an unseen force, and then his torments from the bowels of hell began. I think it must have been the seafood platter. <laughs> I was going to die, didn't I, dear? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, where's the little girl's room? My dear, entering the hall, you shall there be presented a staircase, which you must descend, and you must go up and up and up, forever up, into the farthest reaches of the house. Then it's second on the left. <laughs> I am really, really excited to be able to show you this next species because this is not only one of the rarest, but uh, also, well, undoubtedly the most exotic looking creature in the whole of Britain. And, oh, hear that? Hear that? There? there yeah, that sort of um, high pitched warbly. Now, that is the unmistakable call of the Colleen. something like 100,000 a month to keep her. That's worth it, though, isn't it? I think so. I mean, look. What? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh I don't believe this. Wayne's playing. Wayne's playing. Look, oh, she's playing. Oh. Anyway, there's uh, something else I'd like you to see around here because there is a free-flying flock of lesser privileged bimbos. We'll be lucky to see them because at the moment they're all out foraging for football. Good morning. Have you heard the good news? Christ has risen. Oh, have we really? Well, you better come in then. <laughs> Tea, coffee, gin. If you'd come at five o'clock this morning, I would have been able to offer you some absinthe. But I lent to the local brownies to take camping. Our Lord and Saviour has risen again. The Jewish fella? Is he back? Oh, I do hope so. 
because he had such a rum deal the first time round. <laughs> of course, I'm not terribly religious myself, although I have dabbled. The closest thing I got to fundamentalism was helping some village elders shrink ahead a New Guinea. <laughs> Biscuit? No, thanks. A yak's head, I hasten to add. Are you sure about the biscuits? They're very good. They don't make them anymore. The company went bust in 81. I thought at first you were canvassing, because I never got on with politicians. Got off with a few. <laughs> I'll never forget a backbencher ran out of me when we lost the Suez Canal. Junior members are more ways than one. Of course, he was a good friend of my first husband, Tommy. Oh, dear, sweet, misguided Tommy. Of course, I first met him in 44 when I was driving an ambulance containing 20 circus dwarfs and a bad poet across the Urals in Romania. Of course, we had very little to eat and it was distinctly nippy. 30 below. But if there's one thing we did have, it was spirit. Thirty cases of it. Kentucky bourbon, if memory serves. Drove poor Tommy to distraction. Two years later, his bloated corpse was washed up on the island of Kos. Looked like an old plum tomato. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Uh, we've got to go. Oh, really? Second on the right. Don't flush. I'm saving it for me marrows. <laughs> Yes, never easy losing a husband, especially one of your own. There they are. Hey, there, there they are. are, look. Pete! 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 Pete. 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 Here. Oh, leave us alone, you wankers. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Pete! 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 Go, Pete! 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 Show us your cock, Pete! Oh, yeah, show us yours. It'd be a little one, probably. Please, listen, take the leaf out of my book. Don't rise to the bait. Just be calm. I'm twisting my melon, man. Piss off! Oh, thank God we're home. <laughs> Put the kettle on, darling. Ooh, I'll never get used to these things. Oh, I am so exhausted. Having to pretend you're a smack addict and a drunk really takes it out of you. Generating publicity is very hard sometimes. Oh, lovely, sweetheart. Oh, flip. We didn't bring the milk in. I got it. Not at the table, Pete. I just want to finish the funnel off. It won't take a moment. You make a mess. Last time you got glue all over my china spaniels. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shelley Craig on the inside looking at it. Who's hot? Who's not? Who's out? Who's in? Who's halfway in and halfway out? Who's approaching in but still predominantly out? Who was never out but always in? And who is in, in, and out, out? <laughs> You might think movie stars have always had their heads in the clouds, and now you may have a point, thanks to the latest surgical craze that is sweeping Hollywood. Goodbye rhinoplasty, hello giraffoplasty. <laughs> yes, celebrities are literally sticking their necks out with the operation that separates their heads from their bodies by up to 30 feet. First up to try the new look was Rod Stewart. <laughs> On the plus side, he is now the same height as his current wife. <laughs> and next time you go to the movies, I hope you're not sitting behind Halle Berry. <laughs> but be warned, after the giraffoplasty, you've got to watch out for low bridges, as Susan Sarandon found out when she took a holiday in Ireland, England. Luckily, partner Tim Robbins was unharmed as he'd only opted for the gecko plasty. <laughs> I'm Shelly Craig, Hollywood Twinkles. We've got anything sharp, sir? No. Any knives? No. Guns, machetes? No. Any weapons of any sort? Absolutely not. Where are you going? 
Manchester. On your head be it. <laughs> Amy Winehouse. Amy! 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 Amy. Amy. Go on, Amy! That's it! That's it! Look at that be at this ungracious hour. <laughs> Whoa! It's Clayton. It's Amy Winehouse here. No, no, she's not here now. Piss off! Listen, man. I'm freezing my butt out here. I need a drink. Oh, all right. Have I got a treat for you? Wait to keep your plate. <laughs> After that, I went off and spent some time with the Mongolian mounted warriors, primarily to translate the Zoroastrian scriptures into English. But then headed west, and that's when I first crossed the Gobi Desert on a one-humped hairy camel. His name escapes me. And then I met Abdul who was 50 years my junior, but went at it like a rabbit, blessing always on the boil, and living in a Bedouin tent for three years with a sex maniac, his mother and a couple of goats is not easy. <laughs> in those days, one just did. One muddled through. <laughs> so Newton concluded that objects um, remain in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. Can anyone else think of uh, another subject in school that uses this principle? Yes, Dean. Uh, is it maths? No, I think you're something a bit more physical. I bet you are, miss. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Come on, any guesses? I'm thinking of Miss Kavanagh. So am I, miss. <laughs> <laughs> Well, perhaps I'll tell her that at lunchtime, Gernon. No, it's PE, isn't it? When you throw a javelin, it remains in motion until it hits the ground. Miss Gavin is fit. Mark? I mean, she keeps fit. I'm sure that's what you meant, but it's not helping us with Isaac Newton, is it? A lot of the other teachers think Miss Cavanagh is fit. Well, lucky Miss Cavanagh. Are you as fit as her, do you think, Miss? I have absolutely no opinion on that, Gernon. Now, can we get on, please? Miss Cavan has gone on a geography field trip, miss. Is she, Mark? How interesting. Yeah. With Mr Terry. Listen here, you little bastard! Despite what Mr Terry says, I gave him the push and not the other way round! And as for that horse vaulting slag, Miss Cavan, and her small ass in a tracksuit routine every morning on assembly, she's had more pricks than a second-hand dartboard! So it's no wonder she's fine! Pizza.
Sarah's smiling down on you. Who? Andrew. No. David. David. Robert. Uncle Robert? Yes, he's smiling down on you. From where? From the beyond. But he's not dead, he lives in Plymouth. There are many types of death. <laughs> I've got the gift, see. <laughs> when did I wake? Into this dream. I must have been the only person in the world who didn't understand this commercial. The Hollywood actress is said to have sold out complete appearance of any credibility whatsoever. It's difficult to see where she can go from here. Too much money! Excuse me. This is my cab. Drive! Has your travel card run out? Everything seems so peaceful. Quite windy though, isn't it? You must be my soulmate. Although you're clearly poor, could be a problem. Who are you? I'm a dancer! No, but really. I love to dance. <laughs> I think you've had enough Bacardi breezes for tonight, love. You must be there, tomorrow. No, I don't care about tomorrow. I've brought you a kebab. Oh, great, I'm starving. Goodbye. Jesus, chili sauce. <laughs> She was pissed as a fart. <laughs> I never forget her kiss. Not with those onions. Her smile. Her perfume. has been dead for many years. His name, his name comes to me from the darkness. It comes to me. His name is, his name is, his name is James Hunt. <laughs> no, Emerson Fittipaldi. <laughs> no piece of pie for you, I'm afraid. I'm shit at sport. Ronnie Ann Kerner and Co are back Tuesday at 9.30 here on BBC One. And over on BBC Two next, why do people use the loo? Arthur Smith gets to the bottom of it with Boulder Dash and Piffle. And later, get an eyeful of Jonathan's gong. His BAFTA award-winning show is here at 10.35.